This video is actually in response to some questions that I had recently about different blade shapes and what different blade shapes are good for. This video is going to be biased more towards a utility knife. What would you use a, a blade shape that's a good utility knife blade shape? But I'll talk about the different ones just a little bit and hopefully get some good information on what they're for and, and kind of how they work. So let's first talk about like a skinning knife or a, or a fillet knife or something like that. So when you're separating skin or you're skinning a, a fish or something like that, it's kind of like, you know, this is, this is our skin. This, this cutting board is going to be our meat. Uh, if you're pulling the skin up away from what's underneath of it, it's going to be free at, at, at this part and it's going to be stuck on this part. So you, what you want for that is a curved blade that's really swept back. So what you're doing is you're hitting that part that's still stuck with the curve and you're slowly peeling it up. If you were to use a pointier blade shape, like a, like a Warncliffe style blade like this, what you're going to end up with is just, you're just going to be hitting the edge there with the point of the blade. So you're going to end up poking through the skin and it's very much harder to do that with this type of a blade. So that is why skinning knives tend to have this big, long belly to them. Knives with this big, long belly are also good for cutting things against flat surfaces. So if I'm cutting something against a cutting board, like a vegetable or something, I want to be able to cut down through it, and I want that sharp part of the blade to hit the cutting board so that I get all the way through what I'm cutting. Same thing with a Warncliffe blade. Uh, you can do that if there's a little bit of angle to it, but you're going to be more likely to contact the board with just the tip of the knife. So it makes it a bit more difficult. So that's not impossible with this type of knife. It's just a bit more difficult than with something like this. If you're looking at cutting rope, it's the opposite. So if you're cutting, if you're cutting a piece of cord and you have a really big curve backwards in your blade like this, what tends to happen is as you pull through the cord, it wants to slip away from the edge of the blade. Now you can change the angle of your hand as you go through there, but that is difficult. It does take some effort. Whereas with a Warncliffe style blade like this, it's more straight. And so the, you can see it just kind of ripped right through there. The, the blade doesn't go away from the cord as I'm, as I'm cutting it. You can see it pretty much stays even with it, even though I'm pulling my hand in a straight line. So that's much easier to do than it is with something like this, right? You can see it, it takes more, more pulls to cut through the, the cording. The very best type of blade to cut through cording or, or you know, something that's, that's flexible and, and rope-like is a karambit style blade, a, a hawkbill blade. What happens with this type of blade is even if, I, even if I miss and it slips on the blade, you can see it just slips right back into the cutting, cutting edge even harder. So this is the very best shape of blade to cut rope or cording or things like that with. That is partly why this knife was designed. You know, this hawkbill blade on a karambit was originally designed for cutting rice stalks. So lots of cord-like things sticking up in muddy, wet conditions that you have to cut through them. Uh, so this was originally kind of a utility knife blade that was later adapted for combat. Uh, a tanto style blade uh, is partly beneficial because it has such a thick tip on it. Uh, I'm getting a different blade here. Now this is a pretty thick blade stock. This is a thinner blade stock, but you can see the tip actually ends up being thicker, uh, closer to the point. This, you know, straight edge and then kickback design is, is designed because you get a, all of this sharp edge is exposed when you're stabbing. So when you stab into something, pretty much all you're hitting it with is the sharpened side and not the dull side on a tanto blade. It gives you a thick tip. There is some flat edge here that is also good for, for cutting rope, cutting cording, things like that. You can see it slides right along there instead of sliding out. Not quite as good as the Warncliffe, but close. Uh, when you're cutting on a flat surface with the tanto blade, it does kind of run into itself a little bit. Uh, so you're gonna end up cutting with just the point there. Uh, kind of this point if you're cutting against a flat surface with a tanto blade. So it does a few things okay, but it does stabbing really well. Uh, most of your utility blades, you're going to see something like this, right? Where you've got kind of a straight section, kind of a curved section, so that it can do some cutting of rope, some cutting against flat surfaces. It's not necessarily going to be the best at anything, 
but it's going to be good at a lot of different things. Spider codes are really well designed for being utility blades because they have a relatively flat edge with only a little curve to it. So you get a pretty good bite in rope and you get a enough belly for skinning things in a pinch. Uh, so it's a good utility knife blade shape, which is why so many people like spider codes. There are also some pretty cool secondary blade features on some blades. So this spider code, this is a, a Caribbean salt. This was designed for being around water where you might have to cut rope or line or netting. And you can see there's no choil at the bottom of the blade here like there is on something. And most knives have that kind of step off there. This one does not have that because it is designed so that if you're cutting rope or netting and say it's drowning you and you can't get a good look at it, if it's stuck on your leg or something, you don't want to get a piece of netting caught here because it will keep you from cutting the rest of it and now you're stuck in whatever you're trying to cut. Even if this goes all the way back on the blade, there's nowhere for it to get stuck and you can still slice right through it very easily with a knife like this. So that's an important feature on like a rescue knife or something like that. So what is my favorite blade shape? My favorite blade shape for a utility knife is actually a recurve. Okay, this combines a lot of the best features of a lot of different knives. So if you're cutting against a flat surface, right, your recurve has that sweet back. So you can get full contact with the rounded edge of the blade on a flat surface and still slice things against a flat surface well. Uh, same thing if you are skinning, right? If you're skinning something with a recurve blade, you still have the full benefit of that flat surface cutting into the skinning portion and being able to peel up that skin from what you're doing. If you are cutting a rope, you still have the full benefit of the backward curve like a karambit where you can really get a full purchase on that, on that item that you're cutting. And as you slide down it, it does not want to slide off. It wants to go back into the blade and cut harder. Uh, so I personally believe that a recurve blade is the best uh, utility knife blade shape. It does have some different disadvantages. If you sharpen with a stone, this is kind of hard to sharpen because there's a lot of curve there, a lot of different directions, and a lot of, you know, that, that middle part's not going to hit the stone very well if you're doing it this way. I sharpen my belt, my knife with belts. So to me, that's not a concern. Uh, it's just as easy for me to sharpen a knife that's curved anyway, and I recommend that you do your sharpening with belts or straps or, or some flexible kind of medium like that because uh, it gives you a better edge and it also allows you to sharpen any blade shape. Uh, so that is a short primer on what some different blade shapes are, are, are good for. I didn't really get into blade thickness or, or edge geometry this way uh, on blades. That could be another video, uh, but hopefully this is helpful and you can make some better buying decisions based on what you need to use your knives for from this video.